Good morning, everybody. I hope you guys are doing all right. We're in week four, the final week of going places. And, uh, and so the last few weeks, we've been talking about what? Going where? Jesus. Okay, Jesus, yes. We talk about friendship, right? You guys talked about friendship up here a little bit, maybe? Friends. They challenge each other. That was, yes, that was one a couple weeks ago. What else? What else did we talk about? Pretend I haven't been here. What else have we talked about the last few weeks? Friends talk about the hard stuff. You're going places. Thank you for reading the screen. All right. They don't miss a chance to care for each other, right? Friends, uh, and you said they, they aren't afraid to challenge each other. They also don't let differences divide them. Remember we talked about that last week? All right, this week we're going to do uh, our, our last week of this. I need, uh, and before you raise your hand, I need two people that are good at acting or improv. I saw your hand first, and Liam. All right, come on up. You're going to take center stage right here. Now, this is, this is a game of improv conversations, all right? Let me give you the rules, okay? You may only ask questions in the conversation, but you want to keep the conversation rolling. You're going to go one at a time. You're going to take turns. If you take longer than five seconds to, to carry on the conversation, you're out, and the other person wins, all right? You have to ask a question, and it has to continue the conversation. It has to be related to what you just talked about. And you can't repeat questions. Make sense? Okay, so for example, I might ask you, uh, let me see, where's my example question here? Um, oh, uh, what's, what's a song you could listen to and never get tired of? And then you gotta continue the conversation. And that's just an example, right? Ask each other questions. Can we but, do an example on like the practice Well, that, that was the example question. Well, so now, example, but not practice you're gonna get to practice right now because you're gonna improv, all right? So who wants to go first? Ladies first, okay, great. <laughs> All right, so you get to start. This is easy. You get to start with the question. He's got to find a question that relates to it and ask another question, all right? Do I get to make up my own question? Yeah, you get to go. All right, whenever you're ready. I need to think. Five. Oh, I got it. What's your favorite movie? What's your favorite movie character? Mm. What's your favorite movie topic? What's your favorite movie snack? Here, I'm just gonna pass this back and forth. What's your favorite movie drink? What's your favorite movie candy? What's your favorite movie cinema to go to? What's your favorite candy, like popcorn? Oh, that's a repeat, repeat. Okay, you win round one. See how this makes sense? Okay, that's good, that's good. All right, so we got one, zero. Liam, you get to start this time, okay? Any topic, new topic, you get to start the conversation over. You ready? And I'm just gonna pass this so you don't have to like Hand it back and forth. Okay, ready? Here we go. Do you like cheese? Do you like crackers at the cheese? Do you like provolone? What type of cheese do you like? Do you like cheddar? Uh, what type of crackers do you like with your cheddar? Do you like mozzarella? Do you like blue cheese? Do you like American? Do you like putting cheese on your sandwiches? Do you like Monterey Jack? Oh my goodness. Well, how many cheese do you know? Do you like mac and cheese? Oh, do you, do, uh, what type of cheese do you like in your mac and cheese? Do you like cheese and peanut butter? <laughs> do, you like, do you like cheese and jelly? Do you like cheese and ham? Do you like to dip your cheese in some type of liquid? Do you like cheese, ham, and mayo sandwiches? Ugh. Do you like ham and cheese sandwiches? Oh, that's a repeat question. He said ham and cheese. All right, one to one. All right, Whew. that was good. All right, now you're gonna rock, paper, scissors to see who gets to start this next one. Okay, rock, paper, scissors. Rock, paper, scissors, see who goes first. Okay, do you want to go first or you want her to go first? I can go. You have three seconds, one. I'll go first. You're gonna go first, okay. Quiet in the audience. Okay. 
Here we go. Do you like Marvel? Do you like DC? Do you like Ant-Man? Do you like Wonder Woman? Do you like the Wasp? Do, do you like a um, Catwoman? Yeah. Do you like the Scarlet Witch? Uh, how many DC movies or Marvel movies have you watched? Do you like Iron Man? <laughs> do you like Superman? Do you like Batman? Okay, no more characters. Uh, what? I'll give you an extra five seconds. Okay. No more characters. Okay. Uh, uh, Starting uh, now. Uh, 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 how many? Wait. Oh, I give up. Okay, all right. Yay! Liam's our winner. Give it up for Liam. All right, you guys can have a seat. Thank you for participating. All right. So, if you've ever tried, if you've ever tried to carry a conversation with somebody, and you know, like, you've got to keep asking questions to keep getting them to talk, right? Sometimes that can be difficult. Sometimes uh, we, we like acting, asking the surface level questions, but has anybody ever asked you like a really deep question that you don't know the answer to? Yeah. Have any of your friends ever asked you something and you're like, I have never thought about that in my entire life, yeah. right? Like when you're friends with somebody, you ask like the weirdest questions to each other. You, you, your conversations get deeper, right? There's the, guy, the, the kid you passed in the hallway at school. They're like, hey, what's up? How's it going? They're like, sup, right? And then there's the people that like you have conversations with and you get to know over a long period of time and you ask them questions and you get to know each other. You talk about things on a bit of a deeper level, right? The better you know somebody, the, the deeper conversations that you've tended to have with that person, right? And sometimes questions, uh, questions are funny, but being honest about what you really think and what you really believe about a variety of things is sometimes vulnerable, right? Like, for some of you, maybe who grew up in church and have doubts about certain things, maybe that's hard to admit, like, hey, I struggle to believe this. Or what does the Bible mean when it's talking about this, right? Sometimes, some of you, and, and you'd be surprised how many students I've talked to over the years that, like, they're talking about a friend that they hang, hang out with a lot or, or uh, somebody that they're dating. I'm like, oh, are, are they a Christian? And you know what they tell me? I, I hear this more than any other answer. I think so. Which is wild, because like either you're really good friends with the person, or you're dating the person, but you don't know what they believe, right? It's wild. It's like there's something inside of us that's afraid to offend or ask anything deep, because our friendship is nice when it's on the surface level. But anytime you got to go deeper, it's vulnerable. And it's sometimes difficult to top, talk about things that matter more. And so... Sometimes we shy away from those things in social conversations and even with people that are close to us. But friends aren't afraid to go deep with each other. So uh, let me read from Matthew. This is, this is Matthew. Uh, he, he's writing this down uh, about an instance where Jesus is talking to his disciples. And this is, this is what happens in Matthew 16, 13 through 20. It says, when Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do you say the son of man is? Right? All right, this is, this is somebody who's described in the Old Testament prophets, you know, uh, talked about him. He, who do you say that the Son of Man is? They reply, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and so others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And Jesus said, but what about you? Who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. In other words, you are the one prophesied about. You are the chosen one. You are the one who's going to rescue us, right? And Jesus replied, can you, can you imagine how great this would be if Jesus replied to you this way? Blessed are you, Simon, son of Judah, for this was not revealed by, uh, to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter. Remember his name, his birth name was Simon, but Jesus renames him. You are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of, ha gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the kings, keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he ordered his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. In other words, he's like, you know, I know you know. We're not going to tell anybody yet because the time has not yet come, you know, for the rescuing part. But good job for your faith, Peter. Renames him, gives him this title, and, and it's, it's a super awesome moment. Peter was probably on cloud nine, probably a little confused, but also probably really excited. He's like, wow, Jesus gave me a new name. He's, he, I'm, I'm a rock. You know, I'm, I, he, was, he was the rock of the first century, right? And, and so maybe not as muscular 
or bald. We don't know. But Peter is the rock, and, and Jesus gives him this name. It's awesome, right? And he took his closest friends, and, and Jesus wasn't afraid to go deep with the questions. In fact, that was the whole reason he was there, to build relationships with the people and reveal to them what was true about life and about their father who created all life. And so uh, he, he'd tell them this. And sometimes in our friendships, I think we're afraid to ask direct questions. What do you think about this? What do you believe about that? We don't want to start arguments, and sometimes we don't want to you know, cause a tiff or anything, so sometimes we shy away from that. But friends know each other, and they're not afraid to ask the hard questions, right? But unfortunately for Peter, Jesus' questions didn't end here. There, there's actually another part of this story, right? From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. So, in other words, Peter just said, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus is like, yes, good job. Also, I'm about to go get tortured and killed in Jerusalem. And he's like, whoa, 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 whoa. right? All the disciples are like, they thought the Messiah was going to come and rescue them in the sense like, we're going to overthrow Rome. We're going to get rid of the people that are ruling over you. The kingdom of heaven is going to be on earth and it's going to be like a real kingdom like, like that you can see just like any other kingdom of today. But that's not what Jesus meant by a rescue. And, and nobody got it. Especially Peter. He says this. Um, he took him aside. Can you imagine? Peter took Jesus. Jesus, I'm the rock. Come here. Come here. I know. You, you know that I know. So come here. Come here, pal. And G he says, Peter re began to rebuke Jesus. Never, Lord, he said. This shall never happen to you. You're the Messiah. You can't be killed. Right? And then Jesus says this. He turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. So on the one hand, Peter, you're great. You're the rock. Great job. And on the other hand, you're not getting it entirely yet, right? And Jesus' rebuke for Peter is strong, probably because that, it was probably a legitimate temptation. In fact, when Jesus was tempted in the desert, the devil tempted him along such lines. You don't have to really die. Just turn a stone to bread. Just jump off a, 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 the, the building and let your angels catch you and everybody will know that you are the Messiah. But Jesus knew, no, the penalty of sin is death. And I have to be that atoning sacrifice. Therefore, I must die in order to save the world. And that's going to be hard. But I love my people enough to do it. I'm not going to take the easy route. There is no other way. And so Peter almost presents as a temptation to Jesus again, just like the devil in the desert in Matthew chapter 4. He says, get behind me. You don't understand. I must do this. This is how I will be doing the Messiah-ing. This is how I will rescue the world. And so, uh, sometimes, th th this is key for us to learn in, in our conversations with each other, is that sometimes we will be rebuked by our friendships. We, we will be rebuked, and we talked about this a couple weeks ago, about being pushed, about being challenged, um, but sometimes we, we need that. And see, believing that Jesus is the Messiah means that he literally died and rose from the dead for the sake of your sins. Right? This is not anything that the Jews of that time thought that the Messiah was supposed to do, and that's why it caught Peter off guard so much. But through Jesus, God does great work in the world by sacrificing himself. That, that's why Jesus, I think, probably reacted so severely to Peter. But we know that this experience shaped Peter and affected him and changed his perspective moving forward. Right. Uh, check out what Peter wrote in 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 15 through 16. He says, But in your hearts revere Christ as Lord. And this is on the other side. Jesus already rose from the dead and sent him back into heaven. The, the disciples are going and planting churches and ministering to people. And, and Peter's writing to the church. And he says, Revere Christ as Lord. And he says this, Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ might be ashamed of their slander. In other words, know what you believe by asking the hard questions and figuring them out for yourself so you have an answer. Even if it's you don't know what the final answer is, but you thought of it and you thought of an answer that's satisfying enough for you for now, that means doing that. It means being willing to have a conversation. It, it doesn't mean be willing to unpack and be able to describe scientifically everything that's true about the Bible. It doesn't mean being able to defend everything under the sun 
because that's a lifelong journey. But it does mean knowing why you believe what you believe and not just because your parents believe it. Be prepared to give the answer for why you believe. See, friends aren't afraid to talk about what they believe. They're not afraid to talk about what they actually believe, what's true. They share their real thoughts, but they do, do this with gentleness and respect. Just to give you some tips on this. Um, again, this isn't so that you can just argue people to death when it comes to your faith, but it just means having an answer, being able to have conversations with your friends. Right? One, you gotta be, you got to be curious. Don't come in hot-headed and think you know it all. Don't come in assuming you know what the other person thinks. Be curious. Ask questions. Just like that game here at the beginning, right? Ask conversations. Get them talking so that you can learn more about what they think. Secondly, be authentic, right? Be real. If you don't know the answer, say, I don't know. That's a good question. Or, or like, actually, I think I have an answer. This is what I think. But be authentic. Be real. Don't put on a show. Put on a face just to not offend somebody. Be real. And, and thirdly, be gentle, right? Peter says do this with all gentleness and respect. You've got to be gentle with people. If you come and be like, you're wrong, right? And you try to argue them and you try, you try to put them down for believing whatever they believe, then that's not going to get you anywhere. So be gentle, be kind. Notice the tone of your voice and the volume of it. And lastly, be respectful. Be patient. Listen to them. Don't just ask one question. Ask several and then respond to it. And then just continue a conversation as you naturally would about any other subject with your friends. Your faith doesn't have to be scary to talk about. In fact, that's probably what pushed me to grow the most when I was your age, was we had small groups and we just talk about these things and then after small groups we would hang out and we go to each other's houses just like you guys probably do. We play video games, we do all the things, but then we would have real conversations and we'd talk about these kinds of things. So be, don't be afraid to do that. Friends aren't afraid to talk about their beliefs.